God bless you. We've been talking about financial prosperity. You know this kingdom of God is a very prosperous kingdom. And right from the inception of this ministry, the kingdom of God, Dominion Ministries, precisely the PC Church that we are here pioneering this, we'll be talking prosperity all the time. God cannot perform a work that has not been preached. It's the law of the kingdom. They went forth, they preached the word, God walked with them, confirming it with signs and wonders. Any area where you do not have kingdom knowledge, you remain dark in that area. There is the law that governs the way activities are done in this treasurable kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, and as citizens, we have our constitution, which is the word of God. It guides our activities. Any money God gives you which you will not manage properly, you risk losing the money. You see, God's problem is not giving money to you, per se, or God's challenge. No, no, no. His concern is your management of it. We have talked about money, the source of money, the root of money, how to work for it, and we have said and established in this teaching so far, we don't preach the love of money. It is wrong. It is forbidden. It must not be heard in this ministry. We don't do that. We teach people principles that will lead to the generation, gradual, sustainable generation of wealth. The primary responsibility is on you. You need to know the word. Hear this now. God works on laws, and there are laws that govern the way we do activities in the kingdom. I repeat that again. In that John 6, verse 12, after feeding these 5,000 men, Jesus instructed that the crumbs that were left should be gathered, should be gathered so that nothing will be wasted. My God, that is management. In the kingdom of God, <laughs> We only receive things and we increase more as per our ability to manage it. To manage means to take care of something, basically speaking. It also means to add value to whatever has been entrusted into your care. This is why this disciple, this particular manager, hmm, took off the five talents he was given and went and traded and added five more. And because of that, he was enlarged and given control over 10 cities, from talent to cities. That is the breakthrough power of good management. It leads to an influence and dominion. The guy with two brought forth. I have traded, I've had two more. Note this, when God gave them these talents, because that particular parable in Matthew 25, 14 forward, is a reflection of Genesis 1, 26. God gave us talents on earth. He's given us giftings which we are supposed to trade out with. Most so talent there means a bundle of money. Money given to you must be managed. How do you use money? If you are not able to give an account of the finances in your keeping, perhaps for the past three weeks, trust me, you are a bad manager. If you use dresses and you burn them up, when someone has need for dresses, you are a bad manager. If you even use soap in your house and this soap goes halfway, you discard it because you have an avalanche of soaps and someone needs soap next door and you cannot, it's bad management. If you cook food, food stays in the pot and gets fermented. When people are hungry next to you, it's bad management. That is the law. We don't waste things in this kingdom. Good management principle demands that whatever you are giving, you add value to it. You see, Christians and generally children of God are poor. And yet the people in the world are rich. I'm not trying to compare what they do to get riches. No. But God operates on principles and he is no respecter of persons. If you mismanage resources, you will lose them. Why? To that man who was given one talent, he didn't trade it off and he instead insulted the king. Hmm. And you know the instruction God gave? Take of this one talent from this ungrateful bad steward, this bad manager. And give to the man who has ten more already, my God. Because to whom, to he who has much, <laughs> much will be given. In other words, if you manage properly, Luke 16, you go read the book of Luke chapter 16. When you manage the little you are given, and you do it faithfully, and you improve on it, and add value to it, you are entitled to receive more. It's the law of the kingdom. So if God starts blessing you with 1,000, with 2,000, with 3,000, with 4,000, with 5,000, right up to 10,000 and right up to 20,000 and 100,000, 
If you start being faithful in managing the 10,000, the 5,000, right down to even the 100 francs you are given, trust me, he will entrust you with more. That goes to say this. You may pray about many things. It appears God will only answer as per your management ability. You know, we have a lot of resources on earth here given to us by God to manage. His problem is good management, which is lacking right in the body of Christ. Trust me, there is abuse of anything given to man in the body of Christ, even today. People come to church late, they don't care, but they will attend secular meetings in time. Bad management, huh? People who are into secular jobs, they appear at work late consistently. What do you expect? You'll be fired. And many more of these things. People leave security bulbs, light, even right at home, unattended to. And when the bulbs blew off, you begin to ask for money to buy more. It's bad management. God watches all these things. We need to repent of this. You see, money only increases to you more and more if you start understanding and applying the principles of good management. Whatever you manage properly, God will make sure that he gives you more of it. Whatever you manage properly, God makes sure that he gives you more of it. Whatever you manage properly, God makes sure that he gives you more of it. It is the law of the kingdom. If Jesus instructed that those leftover crumbs of the bread and fish should not be wasted, but gathered together, my God, that means we are supposed to ensure that the things around us, given to us, should be properly managed. Even you at home, when you leave the tap unattended to while fetching water, that's bad management. Mm -hmm. It starts like that practically. How do we manage money in the kingdom of God? Principle number one, don't joke with tithing. Remember this, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. And money is the major thing that touches people. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most personal things after God. People want to have it and a lot of it. Trust me, anyone who says they don't want to have it for, to ensure that the activities go smooth, they lie. Whenever God blesses you with money, you are supposed to tithe. Tithe is your contribution. It's your kingdom tax. It is necessary for the welfare of the church. It's a law. It's not something subject to debate or feelings. The only rebellious sort, set of people seems to be human beings. And of course, rebellion is one of the aspects of bad management or the attributes of a bad manager. You tithe. That means you give one ten of whatever income. Someone asks, so if I have ten jobs, or maybe I'm having streams of income from 10 sources or 5 sources. Should I tithe from all of this? Yes, of course. Deuteronomy 8, 18. I am the Lord thy God. I give you the power to make wealth. Why? So that I will establish my covenant in this present generation as I did before. So kingdom work hasn't ceased. The power to work, the connections you are having, the strength, the wisdom, and all of that is coming from God. So if you can have the ability given you by God, to work five different jobs and earn five different income to retire from it. That is principle number one of good management. When you do that consistently, trust me, God will enlarge you. Hear this now. Characteristics that a manager must have in the kingdom of God. Number one, a manager must be found to be loyal, to be faithful, to be trustworthy, to be accountable, and to be honest. Five important things. Faithfulness, trustworthiness, accountability, honesty. Now, hear this. If you fail in any of these, you risk to lose resources. You risk losing resources. Tithing is actually God's management program. It's a program instituted by God to train good managers. If you are faithful to give one ten consistently, when God blesses you with a hundred francs, you will give it. When He gives you five thousand, you will give it. When He gives you a hundred thousand francs, because it's a training program. And when you are faithful to do that, mindful of the fact that it is not yours, it is the Lord's. Trust me and hear me. If you are entrusted someone else's property to manage, whether it's a school, institution, whatever, car business, or whatever, trust me, you will be very faithful about it. You see, God wants good management. This is why many people actually miss out, even when they have cars to drive, to drive for others and all of that companies to take care of. They are fired. It will see most of this sucking in jobs today is bad management. We need to understand that. Second principle of good management is accountability. Very important. If you cannot give an account of what was given to you last week, week before last, in terms of money, trust me, you risk losing money. This is why parents don't just give money to children when they say they need money. Parents want to be sure that they have perhaps a budget, a spending plan, or an investment plan, all of these things. They want to know what that money is going to because no one just dumps resources on people. 
management, good management at that is key to ensuring that there's perpetual financial increase in your life. One of the principles beside tithing is that you invest, you invest on wise projects. You see, when you are faithful to tithe, God gives you wisdom, how to manage the nine tenth, which is still his money remaining with you. Oh yes, he teaches you how to go about it. Many people who don't tithe and they escape tithing, they risk up, they end up rather into risky businesses that crash. This is why they've lost a lot of money. Some have been scammed, some have been duped, and many more. Some hypnotized and money taken from them. God ensures he protects you because tithing is your insurance scheme. It ensures perpetual protect, all around protection for you and distinction. So that God guides your feet. You don't even go into wrong business ideas. Wrong people don't come to you. All right? You invest money into wise projects. One of the things you also do in good management when God gives you money is to save it. You can't be spending money all the time. Listen now. In Luke chapter 15, verse 13 to 14, this bad boy went to the father and took off his money, his fortune, in his inheritance. The father has been praying for them. And went into a distant country, hear this, and spent all of it in riotous living with prostitutes in drinking and the rest. He did what he spent it. He spent. In the kingdom of God, we don't spend things. Whatever you spend cannot be recovered. Selah. That's your wisdom. And whatever you invest in, you can expect returns. So the other good managers took the talents and invested into wise businesses. And of course, they came and hear this. You are supposed to do a business. You have created a business. Problems around your business opportunities. One of the wise ways of managing money entrusted in your care is to take care of those problems. Develop a plan. Meet the needs of people. Then you will pay more. I pray for you that you will not enter into mismanagement. Of course, one of the key ways to ensure an exclusive happiness in your life and distinction in all things is selfless giving. You sacrificially give heavy money. I call it money directly because we keep playing about this thing. First Chronicles 29 verse 3. Because of David's love for the house of the Lord, he gave of all of his gold and silver and actually charged others to also contribute so that the tabernacle will be built. What was the reward? God gave him a long life, caused his son to inherit his throne, Solomon, who became so prosperous. That principle hasn't ceased. It still works today because the word of God is yea and amen. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hear this. Good management is master key to ensuring that more money comes to you. I want to also make a point right here. Being a good manager does not mean that you should become a spendthrift. Or at the same time, it doesn't also mean that you should become a miser. You don't hoard resources. Money becomes useful to God when it's converted to goods and services that meet the needs of people. You don't hoard resources. You don't become a selfish person. You are supposed to be selfless. It's an act of love. And whoever walks in love walks in God, God in him, and God will reveal himself and manifest himself to him. You use the resources God gives you to bless people. It's very necessary. Generously give out to people. Proverbs 1917, you will have rewards. And God ensures you are perpetually blessed. The Lord will increase you in Jesus' name and give you wisdom to manage your resources. Hear this in conclusion. If you have not yet developed a business plan and you have income coming to you, before you even think of spending, save first. Apply these basics. Ensure you are tithing to your local church and bless the work of ministries and especially flourishing ministries that do the work of the kingdom. Ensure that you do sacrificial offerings. Then if you don't yet have a plan, allow the money saved. Hear this. And make sure before you invest into business, think twice. Ask questions. Seek counsel. The Bible says, purposes are established. Okay? Plans will prosper when there is good counsel. In other words, begin with the Holy Spirit. God, what do you want me to do? Show me how. How do I go about it? Then seek counsel from people who have been into it, who have no material motive. Then pray again and take your time. Leap, look before you leave. It's necessary. May the Lord bless you and prosper you in your financial management abilities. You will be a good kingdom steward. I declare over your life in Jesus' name. Prosper. My name is Nchanzi Kenneth, BCG Church. Bamina, God bless you. Goodbye.